Now that we have defined the concepts of estimator, bias and mean squared error, we are ready to present the minimum mean squared error estimator. But before we actually define it, we should notice that the minimum mean squared error estimator is a Bayesian estimator. This means that it belongs to a branch of estimation theory, which is usually called Bayesian estimation. The main characteristic of Bayesian estimation is that the unknown parameter theta is assumed to have a random nature, and therefore it is modeled as a random variable that has a prior probability density function. Here we denote it with p of theta. Since we have a probabilistic description of the unknown quantity, we can also obtain a full probabilistic description of both the unknown variable theta and the data x by means, for instance, of a joint PDF p of theta and x. Now, how to define the prior distribution for a given unknown variable in an estimation problem is a topic that has always been controversial within Bayesian estimation theory. Many times, uh, the choice of prior is done following a mixture of arguments. On the one hand, one could rely on past experiments in which uh, the value of a given uh, random variable or a given unknown parameter has been estimated in different environments through different experiments and tried to, with this, estimate a distribution for the unknown parameter. Other times, we may just rely on physical constraints. For instance, if the unknown parameter that we are to estimate theta is, we know it to be a positive quantity, then we would not choose prior distributions that have a support over all real numbers, positive and negative, and instead we would only choose prior distributions that take values on the positive real numbers. Other times uh, we also define the prior distribution p of theta based on tractability and convenience. For instance, we choose distributions for p of theta that allow us to easily compute either the joint distribution of the data and the unknown or the posterior distribution of the unknown parameter given the data and so on. In most cases, the choice of prior p of theta is actually done following a mixture of these arguments. As I said, the choice of prior PDFs is a very controversial topic within estimation theory and in fact there are some statisticians that would not at all rely on Bayesian estimation theory because they claim the choice of priors is not done in a sound way. For the time being, however, we will assume that we have a full statistical description of our estimation problem which is given by the joint distribution of the data and the unknown variable. We will see later on that for other Bayesian estimators, such a full characterization of the statistical dependency between the data and the unknown parameter may not be needed, and we may be able to do only with some moments of it. For instance, the mean and the variance of the unknown variable and the covariance of the unknown variable with the data values. But, as I said, if we assume we have this full characterization of our estimation problem available, then we can define the minimum mean squared error estimator. As the name indicates, we have here a very simple definition that simply says that the minimum mean squared error estimator of theta is a function of the data, as every estimator is, which minimizes the mean squared error. This is the expectation of the squared estimation error. Notice that in this example, this expectation would need to be taken both with respect to the true parameter, since it's a random variable, and the estimator, which is a function of the data. So this expectation here is taken with respect to the joint probability distribution p of theta and x. 
if we follow this definition and we actually try to find the function theta hat which provides among all possible functions among all possible estimators try to find the one which provides the minimum msc we can find that the result and this we will show in a later video is such that the minimum mean squared error estimation estimator theta hat is the posterior expectation of the unknown variable conditioned on a realization of the data now you may not have seen this operation before we have seen expectations before in the course but this is a special type of expectation this is what we called a conditional expectation when we write the expectation of theta conditioned on x what we mean by this is that as usual the expectation of a continuous random variable will be the integral of the function that we have inside the expectation in this case just theta and this integral will be taken with respect to a probability density function contrary to the usual expectation in conditional expectations we will take the integration of the argument of the expectation times the conditional probability density function the posterior probability density function of the parameter given x and we will integrate this with respect to theta now because this conditional probability density function this posterior pdf has two arguments theta and x what we will get out of this operation will indeed be a function of x we will only integrate out the variable theta and the result of this operation will be a function of x now let's present a few of the main properties of the MMSC estimator the first property that we can easily show is that the MMSC estimator is an unbiased estimator to show this we can simply compute the bias which is the expectation of the estimation error and if we substitute the estimator by uh, the way it's calculated meaning the conditional expectation of theta given x and now I apply linearity on this expectation here and I take the expectation of the two terms independently I can now check that the first term actually corresponds to a conditional expectation of theta given x which will be a function of x and then an expectation taken with respect to x again as we have seen in the previous uh, explanation this conditional expectation after which we then take the expectation on the conditioning variable corresponds to simply the expectation of theta so that the result when we subtract the expectation of theta here will be zero so we have shown that the estimator is unbiased second property is that as the name indicates the MMSC estimator has the lowest MSC among all possible estimators that can be made for theta in order to show this uh, we should look at the derivation of the MMSC estimator which is precisely done by minimizing the mean squared error we will show this in a different video the last important property that we want to remark is the fact that the MMSC estimator fulfills the so-called orthogonality principle. The orthogonality principle is stated simply here and it says that for any function h of the data x used to compute the estimator, if we take the expectation of that function multiplied times the estimation error, the result will be zero. 
In other words, the estimation error is uncorrelated with any function h of the data x. Let's try to sketch how we could prove this. And what we're going to do is actually to write this expectation here as a double expectation, similar to the one we used here, in which we first take a conditional expectation given the data x, and then we'll take the expectation over x. So as I do so, we can now realize that because this expectation is with respect to theta and is taken for given for fixed data x, the function h of x, which depends only on x, is a constant for this expectation. If we wrote this conditional expectation as an integral, the integration variable would be theta and not x. Therefore, we can take h of x and write it out of this inner expectation and we are left with the conditional expectation of the estimation error given the data times the function of the data and then we take the expectation over x. Now as we will see later in the derivation of the MMSC estimator the expectation of the estimation error conditioned on the data is going to be zero for the MMSC estimator. And therefore, no matter what function of the data we have here, its expectation multiplied with the estimation error is going to give us a zero. This is uh, a sketch of the proof of the orthogonality principle, but we can also discuss what, uh, what is the intuition behind it we're saying that the estimation error, after we have applied the MMSC estimator, is uncorrelated to any function of the data. Let's think, for instance, of the simplest function of the data that we can think, which is simply the data x. If I write it here, since x is obviously a function of the data x, due to the orthogonality principle, we know that this expectation is zero. What we say is, in a way, that the estimation error that is left after we have applied the estimator is uncorrelated with the data. In a way, we are saying that all information that the data could give us about the unknown variable theta has already already been taken into account in the estimator theta hat in the MMSC estimator. What is left, the residual error that is left, is uncorrelated with the data, has a correlation of zero, and therefore there is no hope that we can improve the accuracy of the estimator, at least not with the available data x. This is consistent with the fact that we have derived the estimator to be the one that has the lowest MSC among all estimators. So we have just discussed a few of the nice properties of the MSC estimator. The main one, of course, is that it minimizes the MSC among all possible estimators for a given unknown variable theta. We also have that the estimator is unbiased and that it fulfills the, orth the orthogonality principle. However, there are some properties of the MMSC estimator, which make its practical applicability a little bit difficult. If we look at the definition of the estimator, we need to, in order to calculate it, we need to compute a conditional expectation given the data. In order to be able to compute the expectation, we would need to know the posterior PDF of theta given the data, or alternatively, the joint PDF of theta given x. Now, even if we were able to find such full statistical description of the data and the unknown variable, in many cases, the computation of the conditional expectation 
cannot even be done in closed form expression in an analytical way. This can be partially solved by using numerical methods, numerical integration methods that can compute this expectation. However, this is not even the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that usually it is difficult to make sure that we can find a full accurate characterization of the joint PDF of theta and x. Notice that for many estimation problems we have uh, a large amount of data and we may even have instead of just a single parameter theta, we may have a vector of unknown variables. So finding the joint statistical description, the joint PDF of all these variables in an accurate manner is not going to be easy. We will see that a possible solution to go around this problem is to resort to, instead of minimum mean squared error estimator, use the linear minimum mean squared error estimator, which only requires partial statistical characterization of the data and the unknown variable.